Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Howmet Aerospace Inc., ticker symbol HWM. Helmet Aerospace is a business that's been very requested for analysis by subscribers. Currently, their stock is trading for $36.34 per share, and over the last year, their stock price is up 11%. This 11% return is in sharp contrast to the S&P 500, which is down over the past year. Over five years, Helmet Aerospace is returning 8.5% compounded annually, and going back six years to when the business was listed publicly, Helmet Aerospace has compounded at a rate of 12.5% annually so their share price has more than doubled over this time. Helmet Aerospace is currently trading $2 below their 52-week high. They're up about $9 from their 52-week low. A little under 2% of their shares outstanding are currently sold short, and they're a moderately good-sized business. They have a $15 billion market cap. For additional background about the company, Helmet Aerospace Inc. produces products that are used primarily in aerospace, commercial transportation, and industrial and other markets. The company seeks to provide its customers with innovative solutions through offering differentiated products such as airfoils with advanced cooling and coating for extreme temperature applications, specially designed fasteners for lightweight composite airframe construction, reduced assembly cost, and lightning strike protection as well as lightweight aluminum commercial wheels. It has four reportable segments, namely engine products, fastening systems, engineering structures, and forged wheels. The company was formerly known as Arconic Inc. Helmet Aerospace was founded way back in 1888 and is based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. For our fundamental analysis today, we are going to be performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist-style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Helmet Aerospace based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public. It will continue to improve and get better over time. So with that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. So there are two reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns, and these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. The second is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital, so by looking for 14% or higher as a benchmark here, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. How much Aerospace's return on capital has just been slightly above average for most of these years. Over their last 12 months, they're earning about 13% returns on capital, which are the highest that they've been over this period, but averaged out, they're only earning about a 10% return on capital. So while, again, that is slightly above the 7% of an average business, that's below the 14% benchmark we were looking for. And so this is going to be an X to start off on metric number one. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the cash coming into their business. We want their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows to have grown over the last five years. And this metric is all or nothing in nature, meaning that either all three of these are going to be up for a check, or if even one of them is down, this entire metric will be an X. In the case of Helmet Aerospace, they've experienced revenue declines of nearly 50% over this time. But at the same time, their earnings have gone from being negative to now they are positive, and they're still positive over their last 12 months. And their free cash flows have also done the same. So even though their revenues are down, the company is back to being a profitable cash flow generative business since 2021 and over their last 12 months. So while this is another X on metric number two, it does look like the company is slowly but surely riding the ship here. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at how met aerospace on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. So over this time, not only has Helmet Aerospace swung their earnings from being negative to being positive, they've also repurchased about 6% of their shares outstanding. So this is important as a long-term shareholder in the business because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that business. So when a business buys back its stock and decreases the number of shares that they have outstanding, they're increasing your ownership in the business without you having to pay a dime. So it's almost as if the business is making an acquisition of itself. So we want businesses that are buying back their shares when they're trading for below their intrinsic value. And it looks like an attractive use of their capital relative to their typical opportunity costs. As with any other acquisition at the end of the day, you want it to be value additive to existing shareholders. Because of both earnings growth in the numerator and a decreased share base in the denominator, their earnings per share have grown over this time. This is our first check coming in on metric number three. Metric number four is going to be very similar. Here we're looking for five-year free cash flow per share growth for almost the same reasons, being able to swing their cash flows from negative to positive and then also buying back these shares. They've experienced free cash flow per share growth over this time. 
This is another check here on metric number four and through four checks, even though we started things off rough, we're split evenly, two checks and two Xs. Also worth being aware of is that over extended periods of time, we ideally want a company's earnings and free cash flows to be roughly the same. So typically we're looking at timeframes that are 10 years out or more. So even though this is only five years here, it, it was somewhat concerning to see that this business had such negative cash flows while they were still, while they still had positive earnings. That, but that looks like that got better in 2021 and over their last 12 months. Again, that's just something you'll want to keep an eye out on as large discrepancies between these two numbers, especially with cash flows being well below where earnings are at over extended periods of time could potentially be indicative of things like aggressive accounting or even in extreme cases, outright fraud. So that would have been actually one of the potential ways you could have spotted something like Enron. Not necessarily saying that that's the case here, but that is something you would wanna be mindful of. Then for metric number five, we're evaluating how the business is utilizing leverage. So we don't wanna be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, overly levered businesses are gonna be at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. So for metric number five, we want their net debt, which is long and short-term liabilities minus cash and short-term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that they produced over the past five years. Helmet Aerospace ended last year with $3.6 billion in net debt. And this has grown to $3.8 billion in net debt currently. Over this time, they've actually experienced negative free cash flow. So that is not a great thing for this business, meaning that this is going to be an X on metric number five. They have started producing positive free cash flows in 2021 and so far over the last 12 months. But even multiplying those numbers by five would not be enough to support their net debt. So for the business to get themselves into a more healthy economic position going forward, they would need to continue increasing their free cash flows to be able to better support themselves and further reduce the leverage in their business. Just like with any other business, it might not be potentially the absolute amount of debt that they have here, but in order to further determine whether or not this is going to be potentially an issue for the company going forward, you'd want to do more research into the business and understand how this debt is structured and when it matures to have a more comfortable understanding of Helmet Aerospace's leverage position. Then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flows to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will give us a slight risk premium to the rate of the 10-year treasury and give us another reason to potentially be interested in the business. We're using their total enterprise value because it's gonna take into account both their market cap and their net debt position. So it'll give us a better picture of the economic reality of their business that's more similar to a as if Howmet Aerospace were a private company. Currently, they have just under a $19 billion total enterprise value. And we learned that over the past five years, they produced negative free cash flows. So this means that metric number six is automatically going to be an X here. We still do want to run the numbers to see what their current free cash flow to enterprise value yield is. And so when we divide their $372 million of their last 12 months worth of free cash flow by their $19 billion total enterprise value, that only gives us a 2% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield here. So that in and of itself is less than half of the rate of the 10-year treasury yield. And that's below that 5% mark we're looking for for a potential risk premium. And so either way you slice it here, this is an X on metric number six. Then here we're looking at how met Aerospace's dividend profile. So one potential thing that is concerning here is that even in these years where they were producing negative cash flows, they continued to pay out dividends especially given the high debt loads that this business has been under, it's probably not a prudent use of capital to be paying out these dividends. They likely would have been better served by paying down their debt and servicing that, potentially even buying back shares instead of these dividend payouts. Even today where their cash flows don't quite support the absolute volume of their debt loads, it's likely not the most prudent use of capital to be issuing any dividend at all to shareholders. There are a number of reasons why they potentially would be, but given the financial positioning in the business, those would likely be some sort of rationalization. And again, not the most rational capital allocation approach. There are surely reasons that this potentially wouldn't be the case, but again, it's just something you're going to want to be careful of. And if you wanted to learn more about how management is approaching capital allocation, you could read through some of the business's 10Ks to get a better sense of that going forward then we won't be performing a discounted cash flow model for Helmet Aerospace today as their current free cash flow to enterprise value and their lack of a historical track record along this front is not gonna give us much of a model for their inputs. Ultimately, a business's abilities to produce free cash flows from now and until judgment day, discounted back by some reasonable interest rate, is ultimately what that business is gonna be worth. 
And so you're just going to have to learn more about what their potential free cash flow streams are for the business going forward to make some sort of decision of what a reasonable valuation for the business would be going forward. So in summary, How Met Aerospace checks the box on two out of six of our metrics. They're earning slightly above average returns on capital, coming in at around 10%. Their revenues have declined by 50% over the past five years, but they've managed to swing both their earnings and their free cash flows from being negative to now being positive. And they've repurchased about 6% of their shares over this, so they've experienced growth on their per share metrics. However, over the past five years, they've had negative free cash flows overall. And even with their last two years worth of free cash flows which were positive the business does not look like it's bringing in enough free cash flow to adequately support their debt load so it does look like the business is using a high amount of leverage right now then because of those negative free cash flows over the last five years we could not get an average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the company as that yield would have been negative. However, using their cash flows from their last 12 months to give us a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business only gave us about a 2% yield, which is less than half of the yield of the 10-year treasury currently. Then their dividend profile seemed to be in rough shape, even though they have enough cash flow in their business to be able to support a dividend currently. Given their high debt load, it would likely be a more prudent use of capital just to repay some of their debt and get themselves into a healthier position on their balance sheet overall especially as the business is able to earn just above average returns on capital. It was also likely not a good sign that they were paying out dividends in all of these years that they had negative cash flows. Then finally, as mentioned, we did not perform a discounted cash flow analysis of the business today because even based off of their current free cash flows, there would just be too much speculation in that model based off the inputs. So in order to have some sort of realistic and potentially applicable projected baseline going forward for Helmet Aerospace, you're just going to want to learn more about the business and learn more about where their cash flows can be potentially at in the future. It's worth being aware that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding of how met aerospace to help you determine whether or not it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about the business. If you're interested in the business, I'd recommend starting with some of the company's filings. You can find those online from a variety of free or paid resources, including direct from the SEC website or from a service such as Seeking Alpha, which if you use my affiliate code down in the description below, you can get a massive discount on their premium offer going forward. So as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct your deeper research into a business as if you're going to own 100% of it, and you can understand the underlying essence of the business and know that company inside and out understanding what's important and what's not important for the business going forward. So ultimately through this deeper research, you'll learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of the business, and you'll likely be able to come to a more realistic and appropriate intrinsic value of the business for yourself. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Howmet Aerospace Inc, ticker symbol HWM. As mentioned, this was a business that was very highly requested among subscribers, so I'm happy to make an analysis of the company. So if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Howmet Aerospace with me, and have a great day.